What's up, y'all? What's up? It's Rado here, man. We'll wake it up, and it's time to wake it up. <laughs> so, y'all, what's up, y'all? We're here for another week, man. Another good episode. I got um some real good guests that's coming on, having a couple of technical difficulties, but I hope they get on. But I just want to say what's up to y'all, man. Checking with everybody out there and just say wake it up, man. Um, There's been a few things going on in the news, y'all. First off, I want to give my condolences and, and just give a, a moment of silence for everybody who's been affected with all the shootings um, up in Buffalo. Um, it's a tragedy. And it's getting to me because we're getting to a point where we keep excusing domestic terrorism, okay? And let me give you guys the definition of what domestic terrorism is. Domestic terrorism is when someone commits a terroristic act domestically in the United States, okay? They're so quick to talk about Muslims and other um, races of people that come into America and do these things. But I'm just be frank. It's white people. White people continue to go into these grocery stores, continue to go into these malls. They continue to go into these establishments and they continue to do what the hell they want. And we make excuses. It's so sad, guys. And again, of course, you guys know my story by now, but I'm going to tell you all in a second. The first thing that the news does, and especially Fox News, the first thing they do when a white man or a white person kills a group of people, they start hitting their mental health. They said that this guy was troubled due to the issues that he had going through through COVID. Like, he's the only person in the world that went through COVID, guys. This is the only guy in the world that's been through COVID. Not us, just him. So you mean to tell me this guy was affected so much by COVID mentally that he decided to drive to, to Buffalo, write the word nigger on the front of his rifle, and kill 10 people. Shoot 13 people or 14 people. I'm sorry, not mistaken. But kill 10 people. It's sad. It's frustrating. And the BS has to stop, man. Like, when I say it got to stop, guys, it has to stop. I wanted to bring some awareness to this because I was actually, um, I was listening to um, uh, um, a, a show with Dr. Umar. And Dr. Umar pointed out to the point that there has not been one arrest, there has not been one investigation that's been carried out, there has not been one um, white supremacist, white supremacist, I'm sorry, group that has been exposed, that has been um, tried, and that has been convicted in 22 years, not in the whole 20th century, guys. Okay? And of course, you guys already know about the Charlottesville, all those things that still go on. You know about the terroristic threats and things that they carry out on a regular basis. And the FBI continues to lock black men up and people like myself for the smallest things but allow them to go in and do what the hell they want. Okay, yeah, let's 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 take it the guy got arrested, right? But where did it come from? They said that this guy was already on a group, right? He was already on a group where they already talk about crazy stuff in this in this channel that he's in. He already told the people what he was going to do in the in the in the in the um inside of the group chat that he was in before he carried it out. Now let me let me let you know right now if that was a black man. Last week, I talked about Young Thug and what the word conspiracy means. The word conspiracy means to conspire with two or more. And basically, it's like, it's, it's, it's you have an affiliation, which is why, again, if you ever had one of them crazy uncles or the old school, the old timers, they always tell you what? They say, no, nah, I don't take no pictures, Young Blood. Come on, take a picture with me. I'm taking, no, nah, I don't take no pictures. Because the old school guys understood that when the police came and caught you in a picture with a guy that was getting money or that was doing something, you was already guilty by affiliation. You was already guilty by affiliation. So they never did it. Okay. The same way and the same thing happens with this guy right now that was on the chat that has this group of people, this group of following of people that's, that, that he follows. I mean, a group of people that he follows. And you mean to tell me that there's nobody around to convict this lunatic no one around to convict this group of guys that's continuing to come in. I'm sorry, guys. I'm fixing my fixing my live over here on Instagram. But you mean to tell me that there's nobody there to convict these crazy, deranged terrorists? And that's what I'm going to call them terrorists. Because we're getting to a point in society, and it's so sad that 
we don't know if it's safe for our moms or our grandmoms or our sisters to go to the grocery store. We don't know if it's safe for our brothers and our uncles, our sons to go to the grocery store, to go to a movie theater. For what? For what? It's nonsense. And I'm telling y'all right now, and I'm tired of it, and we all tired of it. And at some point, we have to come together as a community and stop this and exploit all of the people that's allowing these racist acts to happen. Because these acts of violence is continuing to spin the narrative and it's continuing to fuel these racist groups of people that's been terrorizing our lives, terrorizing our states, our communities, and our country for centuries. And at some point, it, it, it got to stop, y'all. At some point, it got to stop. Um, Again, guys, how y'all doing again? I'm Rado. This is the Wake It Up Podcast. And um, I want to bring light. So this show, like I said, I'm going to be bringing light um, to guys that's incarcerated, that's been incarcerated. I want to bring light to show the community how to help and assist loved ones. Because a lot of times... I call people that's locked up. I call us the 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 people the the lost the people of the of the forgotten, right? Because it's like out of sight, out of mind. When a person get locked up, it's like okay, we forget about him. We don't know him. You know, he good. He inside. You know what I'm saying? We out here living our life. But inside, it's a lot of things that go on. It's expensive. Things cost money. Um, there's so many um, there's so many different things that we need assistance with. And I'm still saying we because even my case is sensitive. So I don't mean to be all over the place, but I received a 10 year um, sentence in 2017. I completed five years of that sentence. And the reason why I'm home abruptly right now and I'm home on what's called the CARES Act. The CARES Act is a program that was imp implemented by Congress to allow individuals with nonviolent crimes to come home and serve the remainder of their sentence on, home, on what's called home confinement. Home confinement, the, the slang terminology is, is house arrest, okay? And the home confinement things means that you go straight home versus going to a halfway house. So um, glory be to God, um, I, you know, I, I fit the parameters and I was able to actually come home. And as a result, I'm home and I'm happy and I'm blessed and, and I'm fortunate. And um. I just want to be able to do my part because as well as there's so many people incarcerated that need assistance, a lot of times where we come home or where guys come home for prison, they forget about the guys that's inside. And for me, it was hard for me to do that. One, because I'm a lover person, but two, because I really went through the struggle in there. And yeah, it's a real struggle in there. So let me give you guys a couple of facts with that. And then you guys can basically... Um, you know, take it whichever way that you guys want to take it. Um, number one, holidays, guys. Call your incarcerated loved ones on holidays, okay? Um, for a man, and I'll speak for myself and there's many others, family is number one with us, right? Family is a number one priority for us. And we miss you guys. We miss you guys. We miss you guys on Valentine's Day. We miss you guys on Christmas. We miss you guys on birthdays. We miss you guys on Christmas. Thanksgiving and Christmas is some of the hardest time for a guy that's incarcerated. It's some of the hardest times. And I'm saying this because while everybody out here living your life, sometimes, you know, people, you know, that's incarcerated have mental breakdowns. And I've seen people kill themselves. I've seen people kill others. I've seen people act out aggressively. I've seen people act out sadly. I've seen people go through extreme um, extreme depression due to them not feeling love, due to them feeling like they're missing out, due to them having regrets, due to, um, you know, people dying. You know, for me, I will have to say my biggest regret and the hardest thing I ever dealt with was when my grandmother died. So everybody know I'm a grandma's baby. Um, rest in peace to my grandma, Veronica Norman. She was a hero. Um a government worker, she was a nurse for 41 years at St. Elizabeth Hospital, also DC Village, um, right here in Ward 8. Um, hard working woman, um, worked up until the day she died. Um, she died March 
I'm sorry, I said March. She died April 18, 2020, and she passed from COVID. Um, you know, COVID came out in March of 2020. And at that time, none of us really understood what, what COVID was. We had Donald Trump up there telling us we can inject bleach. <laughs> we can inject bleach inside our skin and all that other crazy stuff. So none of us really had an understanding as to what it was and what it wasn't. However, my grandmother went to work every day and she contracted um, the virus and she died two days later. It was a dark time for me. It was unexpected. And I am a very strong will individual. Um, I have a great support system. I'm love, but I couldn't handle the situation. Um, I was very aggressive. Um, I felt alone. I was confused. I was angry. I was shameful. I was regretful. I was so many things because young men, we have one goal and most of us do, right? If, if, if you were raised loving your mom and loving your grandmother and wanting to get them out of situations, my, you know, some of my family members, like my grandmother lived in a, in a, in an area that was low income and my dream, like a lot of other black boys, was to get our moms or our grandmothers out the hood, was to buy them that house, was to get them that luxury car, was to give them that dream, was, was, to, was to basically have them never struggle. And for me, that was my dream. And when she died and me not accomplishing that because I'm behind the wall, I'm locked up, it was a tough time for me. Um, again... COVID was going on, so we didn't have anybody to really advocate for us. We was locked down. Um, I wasn't able to really communicate with family. She, she, My grandmother passed on a Saturday. I didn't hear about it until Monday. My sister called me um, using the counselor's um, phone. And, and listen, he was cool, but all the counselors not like that. You know, me and the counselor had a good rapport, and this is something they're supposed to do, but they all don't do this, right? So they end up doing that. And I hear the news and, and I just kind of blacked out, guys. You know, I, uh, when, my, when my sister gave me the news, I started crying on the phone. And I just, I hated the world. You know, I hated the world. You know, um, yeah. And even now, it's still hard for me. Even now, I still have some healing to do from this situation. Um. Because, you know, I, I, I love my grandma, my grandma's baby. But this is just my story. I'm sharing this with you guys because every family is affected by someone that's incarcerated. I need you guys to understand that just because we are locked up, we're still human. We still feel. We still hear what's happening, okay? We have a lot of different feelings, and one of the I'll say one of the hardest things for us is to go through these hard times alone when we were out, when we were once free men assisting those who are not now assisting us. Now, let me back that up. Let me put that in lameness terms, okay? Because, you know, I'm going to give it to you guys real. We feel that it's very messed up when we're home. And we're doing everything in our power to help you guys. And then when we leave, you guys forget about us. There's a lot of regret. I mean, there's a, there's, there's a lot of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm sorry. There's a lot of um, resent that's built within the incarcerated person. Because it's not about money when a guy, when a, when a, when a guy is locked up. It's about the attention. It's about the phone call. It's about the letter. It's the small acts of love. And this is what I want you guys to know. If you got a brother, if you got an uncle, if you have a sister, if you have an aunt, if you have a daughter, if you have a son, if you have a husband, if you have a wife, call them today. Okay? They have what's called a, um, um, a text app, okay? And this text app is it's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful thing, guys. So what the text app is, okay, so let me back up. And me, guys, I was a federal inmate, okay? So I was locked up in what they call the feds. So the state might be a little different, but in the feds, they have what's called core links, okay? Core links is basically a messaging, pro, a, a messaging app for emails. So if you want to email your loved one every day, you have to go through core links. Well, some people are too lazy to actually just 
do a do the five minute thing to uh, to to um to get on and register to be able to email your loved ones. And sometimes you have older people, older grandmas and stuff who just don't understand how. What the text app does it skips all of this so that you can just text a person. We can go to the to the email inside of um inside of the system and send you an email and it comes to your phone like a text message. Okay, it's called a text app service. This is this was a game changer and still is a game changer. Um, I'll be posting some information about it. Um, so you know, get in touch with me, send me a message so I can let you know how to do that. But it costs about seven dollars a month. That's something extraordinary that you can do to help a loved one. Seven dollars a month, the highest one is probably about seventeen dollars, but anywhere from seven to seventeen dollars. Find a loved one and pay for their tech service. Just sixteen, seventeen dollars a month. Look out for them so that they can be able to text and message everybody in their family without issue, without fail. That's a big help. You know what I'm saying? Um, pictures, the same way with pictures. So the text app, another thing, the text app allows you to send and receive pictures. So the same way you send a picture from your phone, it's the same way that you can do it, um, the same way that we receive it. They mail it to us, but all you have to do is just send a text. You know, say, for instance, I'm your loved one. Hey, Rado, just thinking about you today. Keep your head up, homie. Boom. Also, he go a couple of pics from when we had family dinner or when we was out at Six Flags or when we was out doing whatever, man. We miss you out there, Slim. Send. That little thing right there will allow a loved one to appreciate you, to love you, to feel like he's still connected with you for a long time. Simple, simple, simple acts of love, guys. Simple, simple, simple acts of love, okay? Um... A lot of you guys also want to understand what it looks like in there, right? So imagine you being locked up with anywhere from 1,000 to 3,000 different individuals. That's 1,000 to 3,000 <laughs> different mentalities, different attitudes, different mood swings, different opinions, different thought processes, and just different men for the most part. And so for every, I want to say in the feds, I want to say the ratio is um, for every, um, well, okay, so what is levels? I'm sorry. I hate, I hate when I'm all over the place, guys, so we got time to do this. So in the feds, you have, you got different levels. You have the highest level, which is ADX, okay? So, and that's kind of over top of the penitentiary. That's like with the Larry Hoovers. That's where the people where they feel like it's the worst of the worst, right? That's where they kind of go at. So that's ADX. Under ADX, you have what's called the penitentiary or the pen, okay? After the pen, you have um, the medium. The me after the medium, you got the low. And then the lowest you can, you can um, the lowest custody you can have is the camp, okay? So at the, at the camp, the low, and the medium, for every one to two guards, the ratio is like every one to 200 or one to 300. So you have one guard to assess 200 different mentalities and 200 personalities. And trust me, these guards don't give a F-U-C-K about anybody at work. A lot of them, man, are arrogant. A lot of them look down on you. And it's so funny to me because I don't understand how anybody, guard, warden, or anybody else don't understand that at some point when we come home, we're your neighbor. That's what people have to start understanding. The incarcerated man, the incarcerated woman, at some point, the majority that have a date is going to come home and be your neighbor. What kind of programs, what can we do to help that process? Because when we in, they treat us like trash. They call us names. They run into our into ourselves. They throw our food on the floor. They put water on our pictures. I mean, they do the worst of the worst. They beat us. <laughs> they starve us. You know, I mean, and if you are not in constant communication with a loved one, you can't understand what's going on with them. So let me teach you something, right? And next, I'm going to get into relationships and what a woman needs to do to be able to um, assist a man. That's going to be a good one. But let me get into this part. What happens with it, with incarceration is you create patterns, okay? 
So for a person that's incarcerated, everything is routine and everything is a pattern. OK, so as you continue to build that rapport, as you're calling every day, you're 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 um, you're you're emailing every day, you're messaging and all those different things. We as inmates have this. It's hard to explain. Right. But it's 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 this. It's this new sense. OK, so they say we have six senses or five senses, but it's a new sense. And you understand patterns of people because if something is off, you're going to you're going to know. So every day I know my girl called me or every day I know I call her at 850 before nine o'clock count. If she didn't call at this time, then I knew something was wrong. And why was that? She wasn't obligated to call at this time. This wasn't the time we set, but she called this time because she woke up, she went to work, she went to the gym, she went out to eat, she went to watch her favorite show, and she has a pattern. Every human being has a pattern, okay, that they have every day. And for some reason, naturally, she called every day at 850. Well, what I know is because we speak every day and because we have that rapport, if she don't call at 850 or, or I don't call her at 850 or I don't see that message at that time, something's wrong. And I promise you guys, 75% of the time something was wrong, right? So what I'm getting at is that the abuse and the things that happen behind the scenes, if you guys are in constant communications with your loved ones, if he don't answer that phone, if he doesn't um, answer that email, if he don't call you, if he don't respond for a day or two, you know something wrong. And there's diff it's, it's, it's no different in the world that when someone understands that you have somebody that's behind you that will protect you, they treat you a different way. It's the same way inside. If they know you got family that don't give a heck about you, then they're going to treat you like anything. If they know that you have family behind you that love you, it's going to show, you know? So I just want to give you guys, um, I want to give you guys, um, I'm sorry, guys. I want to give you guys, um, I want to give you guys a chance to just understand how that works. Y'all know I'm still new to this thing. I'm sorry. I want to give you guys to understand how that works and, you know, just encourage you guys to continue to stay in touch with those loves because it's super, super important. It's super, super important. You know, like super, super important. Um, I'm sorry, guys, for that call. Um, that was uh, actually my guest that was supposed to be tuning in with us. But for some reason, um, they're having technical difficulty. I want to see if I know how to. No, let me see. No, it's cool. He'll come in. We're going to keep rapping y'all until he come in. When he get in, we'll be able to get in. We'll, we'll call it then. Let me see. The live still on. Okay. All right. Next, guys. Relationships, okay? Number one rule for all y'all chicks out there, man, that's dating a man that's incarcerated. Answer the phone. Answer the phone. If you don't want to be with this guy for whatever reason, don't be there. But just tell them, you know, for it's, it's so many guys in there, man, that go off the ledge, guys, and kill themselves because they find out that their girl in there messing with another dude. They find out the girl in there, not who she says she is. And when I tell you it's a dangerous thing, it's a dangerous thing, man. <laughs> I want you guys to keep it simple because men and they can handle it because it happens so much. If you can't be with that person when they get incarcerated, just tell them. Don't drag them through the mug. Don't tell them you're going to do what you can't do or anything like that. Just say, hey, look, there's something that we can't do, and I'm done with it. You know what I'm saying? That way they understand that, you know, it ain't going to work, and then they can move on. Because best believe it, it's not <laughs> – listen – it's a weird, and I, you know what? I'm not going to say weird. There's a wonderful, <laughs> there's a wonderful community of women that love incarcerated men. And it's because they say incarcerated men got that swag. It's because they say they got that gift of gab or whatever the case may be. But there's a real, 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 hold on, I'm sorry. There's a real big community, guys, of, um. there's a real big community of of people 
of women actually that love incarcerated men. And they out there and, you know, shout out to y'all for giving the good men a chance because there's a lot of people out there that need you. I'm sorry, guys. I'm having technical difficulties with this thing right here where it's acting up and I don't understand why. Okay. Let me try to get my guy in here. Um, let me try to get my next guest in here, guys, and go from here. Okay, so what we're going to have here, guys, right? Um, hold on, hold on. Before I do anything, I'm tripping. Before I do anything, guys, let me, let me tell you guys about yesterday. So yesterday, I went to what's called... Um, um, who was it? I think it was, what's the thing called? Open Doors? So, okay, everybody know about the Unifest, right? Y'all were about the um, Open Streets. That's what it's called, Open Streets. So for everybody from Southeast, y'all remember the Unifest. That's something that they took away for whatever reasons. But the Unifest was a festival that the entire Southeast looked forward to. It was a town where everybody went to the big chair. And we went down to the big chair specifically. We went down to the big chair specifically to um it went down to the big chair specifically to just kick it you know what i'm saying it was food out there it was vendors it was just a good time to be alive at a good time you know and um they had something called open streets yesterday well when they had open streets um you know i got a lot of love i seen a lot of people out there but um i wanted to give a big shout out man i want to give a huge shout out to color real good men on that team Mike, Vito, Charlie, oh uh, man, they ran up on me, man. They gave me a big welcome home. Shout out to Color. You know, I'm a repping y'all to the fullest. You know, Museum got me last week. Color stepped in and got me this week, man. And I just want to tell y'all from the bottom of my heart, man, I appreciate y'all. Um, I appreciate y'all hearing my story. I appreciate y'all, you know, just, you know, just showing me love, man. So this transition, like I tell all you guys, this transition is... It's important, but it's been wonderful. And it's been wonderful for the genuine support that I've got from just family. I've got genuine support from just family and friends. Um, I got genuine support from, from loved ones. And it's just people pulling up on me like color who says, Slim, we want you to do the right thing and we're going to put you in some clothes. <laughs> so shout out to color. Shout out to that team, man. Um, I love y'all for that. Thank you. I'm rocking y'all today, as you can see, and I'm going to keep rocking y'all, okay? Um, let me see. Hold on. I'm sorry, y'all. Let me see. So this next segment that we're going to have on here, I couldn't get my guest. It was He was going to be big, too. Um, I couldn't get my, my guest on here. But what I'm having next is called the NSU Corner, guys. And the NSU Corner is what I'm going to do every week. And it's basically going to have somebody from um, Norfolk State University come up here and tell you what they're doing in life, tell you about their story, you know, where they at in life, probably give you some funny um, stories about me and them. Um, because obviously, you know, I'm a Norfolk State alumni. I am graduated in 2007 with my bachelor's in social work. Um, had the time of my life at Norfolk State University, um, resulted in having two beautiful kids. Shout out to April, shout out to Rigo. I love my babies and um, it's a community that I will never. And when I say never, that I will never depart from in any kind of way. Um, let me show you guys something and walk it up for a second. Even though I'm on this live, I'm going to show y'all how it go, man, how important it is with just being home right now. And I'm, I'm able to do this podcast, but I'm going to move it out the way and show y'all some real love and show y'all what I'm really doing. So I got my family over for Sunday dinner. And, you know, for me, I'm a family man. There's nothing more important to me than family. So while I'm still finishing, I'm going to come on and show y'all the family a little bit and show y'all how I'm reacclimating into the community, guys. It's the family right here, everybody. Hey. Hello. Hello. 
<laughs> this is what it really means to reacclimate into community. This is what support systems look like. Y'all keep doing what y'all doing. Y'all lie. But for me, this is what this is what support systems look like. That's exactly what it looks like. You gotta have family. <laughs> Without family, you're not gonna make it. You gotta have family. And ain't no different. My family ain't no different than nobody else. This is crazy as they get, but I love them because they mine. I love them because they mine. Dang, my bad, my bad. I had to show y'all that, man, because a lot of people talk about it. A lot of people talk about family and putting family first, but it's every day for me. Family is the most important thing. You know, family is the most important thing to me. And it's so important that when you guys are out there, you know, and you reacclimating back into society, that you have your family around. Because, see, it's the same terminology that we use here in the city. It's called trick bag, right? But trick bagging for us means for you to be tricked out of your success. For you to be tripped out, tricked out of opportunities. Um, shout out the million dollars worth of game. Gillian Wallow got a podcast, and what they, you know, they was talking to Young Thug, and of course we keep talking about Young Thug and what they had going on because them catching that Rico case is so new. It's so new in everybody's brain, right? And he told him and his whole crew, he said, "Don't allow yourself." portraying to be a thug being around the influences of the streets trying to prove to people that you the hardest out trying to prove to guys that you're not a b-i-c-t-h don't allow that to trick bag you out of your money trick bag you out of your career trick bag you out of your freedom and as you can see right now and that's what happened you know, and um, and, and and it's tough for me because I can't allow that. You know, I'm older, I'm wiser, and you know, um, as a boy you do boys things, but as a man you put those boys things away, right? But without further ado, guys, we gonna highlight NSU corner. We gonna bring my boy Pops on. Let me bring him on for a second. What's oh, good, what's good, what's good, what's good, what's good, what's good. What's, what's good, up? How you boy? doing, brother? You know, everything is well, man. You know, just relaxing, you know, just getting ready for this next man, big event so, I'm about to do. That's good, man. It's so good to see you, man. So what I was telling to the people, man, um, mm -hmm. and shout out to you, man. This is the NSU corner. And what I'm gonna do, right. guys, is every show, I'm gonna have somebody from my alma mater. I mm -hmm. am an NSU graduate. Yes, you are. And I, any any time I can get a chance to bring any of my brothers and sisters on the platform, I'm going to do it. We got here, right. my boy Pops. Hey, look, I don't Good. know how to introduce you. It's crazy because I'm just you me. basically introduce me anytime. You know, <laughs> so for, for, for y'all who don't know, my boy Pops is one of the legends, one of the greatest hosts. I don't care if it's a party. We're going to say event hosts. One of the greatest <laughs> hosts to ever come out of NSU. I don't know what his uh, major was. I don't know what he did other than play basketball, but I know this guy hosts the hell out, out of a party or out of, out of an event. But um, mm -hmm. Pops, it's good to have you, man. I no, miss you, man. man. No, no. Thank oh, you so man. much. Yo, it, it's, you know, it's, it's just great seeing you back, you know, like yeah, seeing you seeing you getting straight to it. It's, it's amazing, man. I, I yeah. love that for you. I love that for you. You know, so so for me, man, I came home mm -hmm. um, on the first day. I, I seen my kids. Um, right. Course, April came up and they surprised me with her. And then I seen Rigo. But mm -hmm. because of school and you know they in different states with their mom right now, I haven't right. had a chance to be with them on a daily basis until right. you know until the summer when they get out. Mm -hmm. it's, it's it's funny because I told them and I told you know my girl that I was right. going to chill for thirty days. I said I was going to mm -hmm. come home. Just enjoy fresh air for 30 days and do nothing. Right. And it's hard to do that, man. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, hell, hell yeah. I, I know it is for you because it's that, you know, like you're a guy, you know, you're live, you know, like you like being amongst the people, you know, like yeah. you you value positive interaction. So if you would have told me that, like, yo, 
I'm chilling for 30 days. You know, I would have laughed at you like, boy, shut up. <laughs> you you want to be outside. Like, you, you know, you want to see what's shaking, you know, yeah. see see what's going on. And, and I'm seeing, I'm seeing, you know, what you're doing, man. You know, big shout out to Trayvon. I see you running for mayor. I'm going to try yeah, to vote hey, for him. This, man, listen, man. <laughs> I'm going to try to vote listen, for him. Man. Big shout out to my brother, my best friend, my right hand man, Trayon White, running mm -hmm. for mayor. I'm so proud of you, brother. Man, yes. I'm behind him 100%. And it's funny because you're a New Yorker. So mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's crazy because you're a New Yorker. I'm just bringing you right. on. And you right. shout out my boy, Trayon. You know, yeah. big shout out to Trayon White. The city love him. Um, mm -hmm. He's been doing so much here in the city to right. just try to get this thing straight. We're helping with programs, helping with opportunities. And, mm -hmm. man, I, I think he could pull it off as, as, as one of the young black mayors to ever make a big impact. Right. You know? and, 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 and it's needed, you know, because <laughs> the simple fact is that, you know, especially with our male species, you know, the African-American species, we need more men of color in, in these positions and, and in these departments who can make change, who can create a change. Absolutely. You know, yeah. and, and you know, especially for him, especially for you too, you know, y'all are from D.C. So at the end of the day, you guys are D.C. You know, it doesn't yeah. matter what quadrant you're from, you know, Northeast, Southeast, Northwest, Southwest, you guys understand what the city is and what the city needs, you know? Yeah, yeah we do. And for mm -hmm. me, if, okay, so this is the thing. Right. I've always been an advocate for working and for jobs. Yes. And I do understand that our youth need jobs because that idle time for them is detrimental to them going to the streets and committing a crime mm -hmm. or just just stepping over just stepping over a stick and falling into jail right because yeah. that's how easy it is for our young black boys to actually mm -hmm. get incarcerated it's important for me to speak out on this platform and try to just advocate for them you know right believe it or not you know that 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 white woman clutch her her purse story mm -hmm. how when we walk by them they clutch their purse because we're so yes. violent what happens is that I never understood what laundering was, right? You know, I mm -hmm. grew up being in front of stores, chilling, around, chilling, you know, chilling. And chilling. And That's chilling all it is. On a regular basis with nothing to do. Right. That idle time that these kids have and that whole laundering thing is so dangerous, and I see how it affects the elders because they don't know what these young people are going to do because mm -hmm. they have no plan. They're they acting rate. Right. They have no morals and values like they used to, and they're just mm -hmm. cursing and they just they just acting crazy. And right. for me, that doesn't scare me because I can relate to that. So what right. I've been doing, man, I run to the gym every day, right? I'm still right. trying to keep my stay in some shape. Mm -hmm. And when I run to the gym, I see all these kids in front of like 7-Eleven and the liquor store and the gas station when I be running past. Right. And I just be snatching them up, pops. Like, as you I, should, I got the ankle monitor on, so I have to go to and straight to and from my destination. But right. every day I go past there and I say, Hey, man, I say, Y'all need a job. How can I help y'all? Take my number. It'd be mm -hmm. like 15 kids, and only like two of them would put a uh, 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 take their phone out. And right. for me, I'm like, Damn, I wish it was more, but them two kids are still a win. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Them two little kids are still a win, man. So mm -hmm. I'm telling you this because as DC. It's poverty stricken and it's and it's and it's crime rich. Right. And you've been from the inner city in New York in Brooklyn, you can relate because the same things happen in the inner city. Oh, I can I can super relate. So so right now, um, I'm a phys ed teacher at a charter school okay. in Manhattan. I'm oh, that's dope. Academy. Yeah, that's and right. I and I also and I also have a business is called um NYC Prospect. So basically it's a it's a basketball multimedia platform. So okay. you know, we do educational workshops we do a lot of give backs um of course we do basketball events but what the one thing like i tell the kids you know who'll be in front of these stores and who'll be in front of liquor store i'll be like listen you know there's 24 hours in a day bro and you out here just wasting time just yeah. chilling because a lot of them because a lot of kids feel as like they don't know how to advocate for themselves to obtain those resources so it's individuals like us who are their voice you know like we're you know like we're the voice of, of our neighborhoods you know like we're even we're even the voice the voice of the country even though you know even though we're kind of doing it on a smaller scale compared to what the nation sees but what our hood sees we're legends you feel me 
And it's like, and and the one thing I could say about Brownsville is that it's making strides for better, but it's also making strides to be bad because it's like our young men and even our young ladies, you know, like they're cutting a ton of after school programs, you know, job programs are, are being cut. So nine times out of 10, all they're going to do is do what they see and what they know. If it's not hustling, mm-hmm. it's drill, it's, 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 it's the drill rap now. And the drill rap now in my community is, it's, it's taking a sour turn because when it comes to music, it's an art form, right? It's art, you know, you express how you feel. Now you're talking about some smoking on dead mans and killing your family. And those acts are really being done. So, you know, so so, so there's only certain individuals who can really talk to these kids and be like, yo, you're wild. Yeah. You know, like you, like, you gotta relax, young boy. Like, shorty, you gotta chill, you know? So you saying you got two shorties on, on, under your belt right now, those, that's not even a small one. That's a big one. Because at the end of the day, those two kids are going to tell those other kids, like, yo, he, he wasn't playing. Exactly. He's serious. Exactly. Like, he, you know, like, he got me a job. I feel like y'all should be next. It's because the kids are the best recruiters, bro. Well, let, That's let, let, you can let, never forget. Let me ask kids you this. Are the best recruiters. So do you, do you still coach basketball? You still got team? Yeah. Um, yeah, I still coach. You know, so right now um, there's a couple oh. of schools trying to get me to coach. Okay. But I don't, but I don't know because the simple fact is that you know I love throwing events. You know, like a lot of events that you know that my team has thrown. You know, like we've been in the Barclays Center twice. We did Wells Fargo. Really? Um, we did the Prudential Center. Yeah. Um, our next big big event is, is going to be at City College. It's called the I Love New York Preseason Invitational. You oh, know, wow. um, we got teams from Maryland. We got teams yeah. from furthest North Carolina. Of course, we got the city schools from the New Jersey, Connecticut. Uh, in, in our area, and our next real, real big event is going to be in Rock Hill, South Carolina. It's going to be over a hundred boys and girls basketball teams, bro. So, 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 so two things, and not even to cut you off. Yeah. I want to ask one question. I want to ask, how has it been for you mm-hmm. uh, transitioning kids from the streets to your basketball program, and how hard has that been? It's it's been 50-50 because at the end of the day, it's like I know the kids that I can grasp are the kids who, who tote, you know. I, I can get the kid who do hand-to-hand. You feel well, me? They, they all, at this point, they all got a gun on them. They all – Yeah. They, they, <laughs> yeah, so, 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 so those type of kids I like because at the end of the day, it's this. You know, like they love – if they love the game, they're with it. You know, a lot of them are going to be like, nah, I'm not hustling. Nah, I'm not robbing and stealing no more. But if they like it, they're like, nah, son, I'm about to go back to doing what I do best. So I like I always ask a kid, it, it's either you love this shit or you like this shit. Exactly. And then the kids and the kids who love it, yo, they change their life around in the in the matter under me in like two months. Yeah. Two yeah. two two months flat, big bro. Two months. I'm talking about like, yo, it was it was one time, it was like, if this is twenty twenty two, it had to be like twenty thirteen. I had a team full of kids from Brownsville, right? People Peep this. I had five kids who had gun charges. I had three kids who had grand larcenies, and I had two kids who was facing drug charges. Wow. And they used to come to and they used to come to every game I used to coach, right? Come to every game. Come to every game. I'm talking about and they would hoop. And, and like out of six of those kids, you know, they played college basketball. And the other four, they have great jobs. That's dope. You know what I mean, and it, you know, it was it, it was just one of those things where it's like you know, just being honest because because that's another thing. And that's why I like your man Trey Young because I feel like his platform is honest and it's for the people. You know, like, you, you know, there's no hidden agendas. There's no, if you vote for me, I can do this. Trey on like, white for mayor. Trey on white for mayor. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know, ain't, ain't no hidden agendas. And that's like, you know, that's, you know, and that's like with me. So like, you know, to tell you this, you know, I'm doing an event for a mentor named Gary Sims. You know, like he, he mentored a bunch of dudes who went pro not just NBA overseas, a bunch of dudes who play college basketball at every level. Um, we invited Carmelo Anthony son Cayenne. Oh, dope. dope. And guess what? He just and he just texted me like, yo, what's up? I need the information. I'm trying to play. Really? You know, so it's yeah. So it's uh-huh. one of those things where it's like, uh-huh. you know, so it's one of those things where it's like basketball f- for these kids is their safe haven. And that's what safe my haven. team and I is just trying to trying to do, uh-huh. you know? I love it, man. I'm proud of you, man. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm happy, man, because you know, you know, for for both of us, basketball has always been our first love. 
Yes, yes. And it still yes. is. I don't care how old I'm going to get. Basketball, I was up there today trying to hoop, but of course, <laughs> you know, with this whole thing that I got going on with my mom, so I couldn't even be out too long. So I couldn't right. even hoop. But this is one of the things that I hope that we can um, bring attention to, right? So we have all these hoopers. One thing you just mentioned to me, you said out of a bas- out of your basketball team, out of 10 players, you had you said you had six of them that had gun charges, four were yes. gun and everything else, right? Mm-hmm. Let me tell you for me, right. coming up in basketball, it was all I had. Mm-hmm. I went out a lot. And my safe haven for when I was going through something in the household right. And I didn't have. I went to the basketball court. I used to shoot shots. Yes. I used to shoot jumpers in the snow, pops. Yeah, as crazy. you should. I go out there and shoot the ball. Mm-hmm. And how do we implement programs? How do we bring big brothers back to say, you know what, you 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 great on the court, but now how do I assess you at home? Because basketball is just a piece. Right. When they go home, okay, so you come to the basketball court and you in heaven, and then you go home and you in hell. What does that look mm-hmm. like? What does that it's, look like? It's it's honestly, you know, and I'm gonna say this wholeheartedly, it's it's something that we we have the ability to change. We do, but but the kid who are who, who we're influencing has to want to change, right? Yeah. Because at the because at the end of the day is this, right? If your son was acting out and you couldn't get a hold of him, and I'm around, right? Once you start seeing positive changes in him, you're going to want to figure out, like, yo, if I told him to wash the dishes two weeks ago, he would have cursed me out. Now my son is washing the dishes with no problems. Because once a kid sees that incentive of hooping, you know, doing what? music or, like, even doing art, uh-huh. they're like, nah. They're like, nah, I'm, I'm not trying to get what? into no bad interactions with nobody in the crib because this is my safe haven and this is what I need. So, 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 the, so the first step is getting the attention of the kid. Then yes. it's this. Then then it's the parent or the guardian or the person who was the head of the household. Because, right. because when it comes to, to the head of the household, you know, the parent or guardians, you know, all they're doing nine times out of ten is signing a permission slip. Right? Okay, cool. I'm gonna sign a slip and I'm gonna let you know, you know, that's that's my child go. But once that parent gets the comfortability with who you are and what you can do, there's no no's. Everything is yes, bro. Okay, so, Every, bro, so look, so look, you, you, you just mm-hmm. gave a great answer, okay? And I want to touch on that. One, I didn't want to cut you off, so I want to tell you this. We are the exception of the rule. You yes. are. You made it to college. I made it to college. But even with yeah. us being exception of the rule, I still went to prison. Yeah. I still went to prison. I still did five hard years. I've been home a month, and mm-hmm. I'm still in police custody. I'm on home confinement. So I'm right. still a prisoner, right? Now, mm-hmm. <laughs> that's just our cases. And I, I say that to say this, we are products of our environment unless we have a constant reminder as to not to be, okay? Yes. I started the conversation off saying how important it is for us to advocate for these kids when they leave the basketball court. Because the basketball court, we can monitor them there. We can motivate mm-hmm. them there. They have purpose. They have passion. They are rewarded yes. in the basketball court. But when they leave, now they go to a place where they got to sleep on a cot. They go to a place where it's cold. They go to a place where they got to share food, where their sister pisses in the bed, when they embarrassed because their mom is giving blowjobs in the hallway. You know right. what I'm saying? We're not talking about – I'm talking about what's really happening in the hood. I'm talking mm-hmm. about when they go home and all their friends then, then, then had sex with their mom before. Their mom right. – they dads getting smacked out and get you know embarrassed. These are the kids that are re- have superstar talent but never make it out the hood. Right. And at some point, we have to develop a program to say, you know what? We are going to snatch this dude up, man. We're going to snatch this 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 basketball team up and do what you just said because you just you just gave the perfect plan. You said as a coach, when you go in and meet with the moms. And you develop a trusting relationship with the moms that is no more no's. No so more no's. Understand that, do you understand that 95% of our youth, 90, 95% of black men grow up without a dad? Mm-hmm. And that's the right. number one poison. That's the number one issue as to why we are incarcerated. It's the number one issue as to why we slip and fall. It's the number one issue as to why we F up. Because right. at the end of the day, mothers yell a lot, but fuck, fathers are the real enforcers. As, mm-hmm. as we grow up like, yeah, mom, I love you. I hear what you're saying. 
but you don't know what it's like for me. You're not a man. Right. You don't know what it's like fact. when I go outside this door. So while we while we listen to mom yell, it's in one ear and out the other. You know what I'm saying? And shout out to mm-hmm. all the moms. Shout out to all the moms out there that crying. We love you. We need you. Fact. But what mm-hmm. I'm saying is we need the dads even more for the sons and yeah. for the daughters. Because there is no household without the structure of the male. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I um I want to go a step further with you, Pop. Yeah. You saying that you want to do those tournaments, right? At this mm-hmm. point, you saying you be doing tournaments all over. At some point, we're going to have to get together, and I'm going to have to open some doors for you in D.C. when you could just say, hey, bring, bring listen, my boys down and get in this tournament. One of the listen, biggest things while you brought up I will children, get you. Right? Bro, listen, bro. I'm going to tell you this, right? I will get you four high school teams. Yeah. Just let me, listen, let me know. Matter of fact, right. matter of fact, listen, I'll right after this show. Member, listen, I'll call council member um, Treyon White tonight. And yes, let let's get on the phone tonight. That you got some, you got, you got some, um, you got some, some kids that you want to bring down and, and put into these tournaments. And that would be nothing for him to do. You get what I'm saying? Yes. I think, yes. and, and, you know, I'm not political. I'm just a friend of his. You know what I'm saying? I'm not right. political. Mm-hmm. But that's one of the biggest things that I do love about uh, Mr. White. Because at the end of the day, you can actually call him. You can actually hit him and say, hey, look, man, this is what's going on. We don't have right. the money. We don't have nothing. But we know we got talented kids. And we need them to have a platform to be able to perform so they don't die, so they don't get incarcerated, so they're not shot. So they don't end up dead. <laughs> and you yeah. know what the council member war they go, you know what Mr. White gonna say? He's right. gonna say, I call you back. But he ain't gonna be like the other people and not call you back. He'll actually call you back. Yes, so, yes. So let's yo, so, so let's have that conversation tonight because because it's this, right? DC is what three and a half, four hours away. Yep, three and a half, four hours away. We can do four games, the kids can eat, the kids can interact, and they can get to know each other because at the end of the day. That's what college was for us. You know yeah, what I mean, yeah, like but... you from you from DC, I'm from New York. You know, yeah. you, you know, in your five years, I always made sure I, I spoke to you at least once or twice a month. Ain't you no know question. what I mean? Ain't no because, question. but because it's like this is like yo, it's like once you know. Because think about it, I may have a kid from from Queens who who, who come down to DC with me, right? Yep. Three to four years later, they might be team. It's like, oh yeah, I remember you from Rado and, and Coach Randy's in exactly. D.C. That's how it works. So, oh, this so is my it's, man. It's crazy because, so basically, like the new thing they're saying, like forget college, skip college, and just kind of like just work your trade, right? So you mm-hmm. have all these entrepreneurs that's talking about all these fields in which we never had a lane in. Like, right. um, let's take crypto market, let's take the stock market, and all those things, and those right. things are wonderful, right? But yes. my kids will always be forced by me. To go to college for this one reason mm-hmm. one thing that norfolk state gave me they gave me a huge bill in which i still owe through student loans <laughs> I, well well listen well i finished off too i but finished the, off too the, the number one thing that they gave me was the relationships i'm yes. talking to you right now through a relationship of love we have a brotherhood if this you ever forever. came to dc it, you wouldn't have to have an excuse to say why you're here you always mm-hmm. have a place to stay and vice versa Yes. And you can only build those relationships on that intimate level with going to college, man. And for those reasons, for me, college will always be important to me, you know, for my kids to actually go because you just can't get the experience anywhere. You'll never yeah. get the experience anywhere else. You know what I'm saying? You'll never yeah. get that. And, you know, and, and everybody still asks for you. Like, so I was in, so I was with, I was with Cam and them at his twins, at his twin Sweet 16 Wow! Last month, right? Big, so I'm wow. talking to I'm talking to Bricks. I said, "Yo, Bricks, I just spoke to Rado. Facetime him right now." <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, it was him. It was him. More Black, Dre, Ryan. All of us was just chopping up. Like, wow, son, call him. I called you like three times. You ain't pick up. You probably was asleep. I'm like, yo. It yeah. just you know it, it it just felt it's love, man. Like, and that's yeah. the purpose of like homecoming. You know, like yeah, at, yeah. you know. At, you know, anybody still asks if I speak to you. I say, hell yeah. <laughs> hell yeah. And I, and I appreciate you, man. I, I, I wanna I wanna give you your flowers now, man. Um earlier Thank before, you so you much. Came, before you came on, I was talking because I suppose I had another guest on, but he's a little older, so he had some technical difficulties that couldn't come on. But I was right. talking to my audience and just telling them how to treat 
um, a loved one that's incarcerated because a lot of people don't know. See, with, with a person that's incarcerated, we develop a lot of resentment for people because in, yes. the, in the world, we were there. But then mm-hmm. when we're behind closed doors, no one says anything. No one sends money. No one sends cars. No one says nothing. Like, it's just like, forget you. So it builds resentment. Mm-hmm. And for me, I'm trying to teach the community now because I know that people just don't know. You know what I'm right. saying? And I want to give you your flowers because you're one um, of the people that was there for me in concert. You was somebody that checked in. You was somebody that used to text out. You was somebody that was like, yo, do you need something? You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? And anybody know, for the most part, when somebody asks me if I needed something, I'm going to always say I'm good. But That's for, a me, for me, it was about you asking. Mm-hmm. Just knowing that you would would suffice for me. Just saying, like, you know what, man? I got you. Just knowing that you would do those, do those things for me, it was enough mm-hmm. for me. You know what I'm saying? And I want to teach people because I tell people this all the time. The incarcerated man, the incarcerated woman is your neighbor. Yeah. When they come home, they will be your neighbor. When they come home, they won't be incarcerated anymore. That's so you don't have to deal with those things. You know what I'm saying? And Pops, I got so many relationships that's changed, man, due to mm-hmm. me at understanding what my relationship really was with people. Now, I'm not resentful. I'm not a resentful man, okay? Right. So for me, you know, my heart is different. So I give everybody... Mm-hmm. A past, right? But at the end of the day, it did show me what some people' intentions really were for our relationships, friendships, and so on and so on. And it it grew me up more. You know what I'm saying? It grew me up, and it and it just puts you in a place of like, who really cares? You know what I mean? So it's so it's so it's like you know, think about it. Like Rigo's mom and myself, like we're real good friends. You know, that's my girl. You know that. So no. I, I oh, so I always made sure, like, yo, whenever Rigo was down and out, he needs somebody to talk to. Yeah. Yo, and he love you Rigo, too. Rigo, what's up? <laughs> yo, Rigo, what's up, nephew? Uncle Pops, you know, when's the next game I'm gonna pull up? Yeah, pull yeah. up. I, yo, yeah. You, you need something? Yo, you need this? Yeah, um, I want to come visit. Yeah, I come visit. You know what I mean? Because that's love that you and I had. You know what I mean? Like, you gotta think about it. Like, my like my mother. Watch, watched you raise April at Norfolk State. Yeah, absolutely. You know, like, you know, she and my mother, she she asked about you, like, last month. She was like, yo, what's up with Rado? I was like, yeah, Rado just got out. She was like, you never told me that. I said, I ain't know how to tell you. Like, <laughs> and this up. She was like, man, tell, tell, tell your mom, tell your mom, I said, man, thank you for always thinking about me. Thank you for got the you. prayers. It means everything to me. Like, yes. you know, I'm very, see, for me, I'm very vocal about things like that, Pop, because mm-hmm. I grew up in a household where people didn't tell you they love you a lot. People didn't give you the reinsurance. So a lot of people be like, yo, that nigga Rado, he always emotional. He always, no. I understand the importance of allowing someone to know how you feel and how you appreciate right. them. You know what I'm saying? And it's something that I purposely pass on to those around me and especially, um, you know, my kids. You know what I'm saying? My friends and everything like that, man. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm That's saying? For sure. That's for sure, man. You know, Pop, when I get a chance, man, to come up to New York, a- listen, April's 510. April's... <laughs> I don't don't know force her. Don't don't force her to hoop if she don't want to hoop, man. No, nah, she <laughs> don't. I'm, I'm mad that I didn't force the issue. Like, I be telling her, like, yo, I don't know why, young. I have no idea why I didn't for April was, April was a gym rat. I know. I get, when she April used to be in the in the little room, I used to have her propped up in the bleachers inside of the car chair. She yeah. the, ball. the ball hitting yeah. her. I used to put the thing over here, the guard from the ball hitting her, and I never put a ball in her hand, man. So I'm I'm gonna be honest about that. You know, like she 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 knows about that, but you know, try to guide her into it. You know, try to guide her into like a track. You know, I, you no, know she track. Is. I'm trying to get her back in the track. She was a beast in track, but now she's a cheerleader. So she liked to cheer and do all those things, man. But I'm trying to get a scholarship. Her. Listen, she, she can get a scholarship for cheer. Yeah, she can. Save you, save you that. Listen, man. S- yeah. Listen, all listen. Anybody who's watching who got kids, you could DM me. <laughs> I'll tell you what it is, man. Listen, <laughs> I'll, yo. Look, look, college, Pop, look, this college, college look, athletics, look, man. Look, yo. <laughs> look, I love you, yo. I don't want to cut too. off, man. But we at the end. I love you. 
Thank you for coming on, man. You know what I'm saying? This is the Wake It Up podcast. Wake it up! <laughs> yes, sir. Hey, yo. Up, love you, man. Yo, yo, start that phone call at 10 o'clock. I'm going to got you. I'm going to call you, man. All right, One, bro. <laughs> One.